Hi, welcome. In this video, we will learn the four easy steps to start a test in Digibrock. Get test key, enter the test key in the application, authenticate yourself and start your test. You can get your test key from two places. First is from the test invitation mail, which Digiproctor would have sent to your registered email ID informing you of the date and time of the test. This mail contains the test key required to enter the test. You can also get the test key from your Digiproctor account. To get the test key from the test invitation mail, first search for the invitation mail in your registered email ID's inbox. If you don't find it there, search the spam folder. Open the email. The email contains the test key as shown on the screen. To get your test key from your Digiproctor account, log in to your account. Your account login credentials were sent by Digiproctor to your registered email ID. If you haven't found it in your inbox, please check your spam folder too. After logging in, you will be taken to your account homepage. Click the test management button to enter your test library. The test library gives details of all tests that are scheduled for you. Click the test for which you want the test key. Test key will be displayed on the right panel here. After you have got the test key, the next step is to enter your test key into the application. To open the application, enter the URL shown and click Start Test. You will be displayed a page where you will have to enter your test key. When you enter the test key, Digiproctor will validate if your test key is correct and also check if your profile photo is found in the database. If all is okay, you will be allowed to pass and reach step 3 to authenticate yourself. If you enter a wrong key or if your profile photo is not found, the validation will fail and you will be shown an error message. The invalid test key error could result from you entering wrong digits of the key or entering a test key that is not of this test. If you have forgotten your test key or don't have it with you, you can always get the test key from your test invitation email or your account. However, Digiproctor provides you an easier option. Just press the click to get test key button. You will be asked to enter your account email and password. If they are correct, you'll be shown a list of tests that have been scheduled for you for the day. Alongside the name of the test, the test key will be displayed. Use the test key to enter into your test. The second reason why your test key validation may fail is if your profile photo is not found in Digiproctor. You will get this message to set up your profile photo. You can do this by clicking on the hyperlink displayed here. You will be asked to enter your registered email ID. If the email ID you entered is validated, you will be taken to a page where you would be displayed a camera box and asked to take a snapshot of your face. If you cannot see your face in the camera box, your browser does not have permission to access your camera. Click Allow to permit your browser to access the camera. Take your snapshot. This is photo 1. If the clicked image is not OK, you can retake the snapshot. Click proceed if ok. You will now be asked to take the second snapshot. This is photo 2. After this, you will see a message that your photos have been submitted for authentication. At times, you may have to wait for a minute or two if there are many test takers authenticating at the same time. Once the authentication is successful, a message would be displayed that the profile pictures have been saved successfully. When you click ok, you will be taken into the test. You don't have to re-enter your test key again. However, if the authentication fails, you are shown photo 1 and photo 2 that you click so that you may get an idea why the authentication may have failed. Usually, it is because the clarity of the photo is not okay, photo is not centered and only partial, or there are multiple faces captured in the photo. You can retake your photo and proceed with re-authentication. Third step is to authenticate yourself. This involves matching your face with the registered photo in Digiproctor. 
and capturing the photo of your identity card. The authentication step starts with doing a device test to configure your device correctly for taking the test. You will be displayed a page with a camera box in it where you can see your face and on its right is a selection panel where you can select the type of video and audio device you have in your machine. It is recommended to select the default video and audio devices which usually is the first option displayed in the drop downs. However, if you are using an external camera or microphone, select that from the drop down list. After selecting the video and audio devices from the drop downs, speak a few words aloud and click the proceed to test button. You will now be able to see yourself in the camera box and hear yourself. A pop up will be displayed asking if you can see your video and hear your audio. If you cannot see your video, the proceed button will be disabled and you cannot continue with the test. You must go back and select another camera from the video device drop down. If that also doesn't work, check if the camera is enabled and whether permissions for the camera access have been given. If you cannot hear your audio, though the proceed button will remain active, you can go back and select another device from the audio device drop down. If that doesn't work, check if permissions for microphone access have been given and its volume is set to maximum. After your device test, you will be taken to the consent page. This page lists things which you can do and cannot do during the test. It also clarifies that you will be monitored continuously and recorded using your camera. You can proceed ahead only if you select I agree. Selecting do not agree will exit you out. You will now be shown a screen with a camera box and asked to take your snapshot for authentication. On the left of the camera box are quick references on how you should take your photo correctly to avoid authentication failures. If the photo you clicked is not okay, for example as shown on the screen, the photo is blurred, you will be displayed a message that your authentication has failed because of face mismatch. You can click a retake and take a proper snapshot. After your face match has passed, you will be asked to click an image of your photo identity card. Hold the identity card such that the card is clearly visible and centered in the camera box. You can retake snap of the identity card if the one you clicked was not OK. This completes your authentication step and you will move to the instructions page before starting your test. The instructions page, if there is still time for the test to start, you will be displayed the time left to start clock. The start test button will be disabled until the time left to start has not reached zero. You will also be shown the test duration and the instructions that have been specified for the test by your institution. Once the time left to start clock reaches zero, it will be replaced with the elapsed time clock. The elapsed time clock shows how much time has passed since the test started. The start test button will get activated and you can click this to enter the test. With this, we come to the end of the tutorial on steps to start a proctored test using Digiproctor's browser application.